All right, this is Mr. Timchak, and we are now moving on to our foundation walls. Now that we have already discussed footers and we poured our footers for our small houses, so our foundation is going to be built upon our footer. So, our, like just like our feet, all right, our footer is our base, and then our legs is kind of like a wall. It's it's resting upon our footer or feet, right? So the height of the foundation wall kind of varies. You can either have like a full height for your finished basements, or you could just have something smaller, like for your crawl spaces, um, depending on where your country, where you're at in the United States, or um, where you're building at, what's recommended. And so the height of the wall kind of varies, but it all depends what you have. But everybody needs some kind of foundation wall. And the very first foundation walls were actually made out of stone, and these were just made out of the local stone, whatever was around. I mean, these date back like two, three hundred years, and pretty much when the settlers came, um, it's not like they brought you know a Lowe's or Home Depot with them on on the board of the Mayflower or anything like that. You kind of use what was around. So you know, you just take a bunch of rocks and then you use a bunch of mortar, which you could just use from sand and gravel, and you kind of just make it into a paste and you put your stone uh, together into a giant uh, wall for your foundation. And that is the that is what you put built your house upon. Now the stones themselves last a long time, but the mortar does kind of chip away after a while, and you kind of have to remortar them. Now um, the thing about them though is is that they do leak uh, water a lot because that mortar might not be tight, or and because the um, the stones themselves aren't very uniform, so it's not like it's a, like locked together real tight. We really don't use stone foundations anymore. What we use is block uh, or poured concrete. Those are the two ones that are most common now. So we'll start off with the block. Block walls are made of hollow uh, concrete block forms. So it's like made out of there's these forms and they're pre-manufactured. And all the block is is just concrete uh, pressed together. And they're hollow right here. Um, they're they're used with like a fine aggregate sand and cement. Um, people like to call them cinder blocks, but they're actually not made out of cinders anymore. Uh, you know, back you know before you know obviously like 1947, uh, people used to use coal furnaces to heat their house a lot, and, and just like uh, just using coal power a lot more. And you would take those cinders, all right, the leftover. It's just like fine little aggregate cinders, and they would mix them into these concrete block forms, and it would literally be like a cinder block because it'd be um, made with those cinders. But that doesn't hasn't happened since 1947, so it's been a long time since we actually had true cinder blocks. Uh, if you ever find an old one, they're a lot lighter than the current blocks that we have today. Um, but cinder blocks. They haven't been made for a long time because they were actually made with actual cinders. But people feel so, so calm cinder blocks. But anyways, concrete blocks are typically 8 inches wide, 8 inches tall, and 16 inches long. So they're hollow because you have to have the sticker rebar through them. And um, they're laid with mortar. And mortar is like a paste. All right, I have a picture right after this. And the people that lay these are usually called masons. They're the block laying trade. So here's like kind of like the paste that you used, and um, you put it on top of your brick, and that is your, um, you know, kind of like the glue that holds all your block and brick together. It's it's a different than some uh, concrete. So cement is like the binding element in both concrete and mortar. Um, that is just something that is added to it. Concrete itself is made with the, the cement, the sand, and like thick gravel. So, and that's what you can use to build, uh, you know, your foundations, your slabs, anything like that. Mortar is to hold the bricks together. You can't like pour mortar out into a form or anything like that. That's only used for concrete. Mortar is just kind of like the glue that is between the joints of block and brick. So the vertical rebar, like I said, it goes through the hollowness of the block, and when you stagger the block like this, it, this should be a, a clear open cavity all the way through. And wherever those um, 
rebar is sticking out, you pour it with concrete so the, uh, the wall is nice and stable here with the rebar. It really ties everything together nicely. And you can see the rebar going all the way up to the block. And this is the start of it. And away you go. See, you can just poking through. And that's a mason putting on some mortar here. And then once you get to the top, it kind of looks like that. One thing about block is that some problems can emerge is that the, it does crack. The joints do have to be uh, remortared every time. They're shifting in the block wall. It could bulge. Um, it could be bowed. So things are things happen. You can call like a wall anchor service and kind of get those fixed after a while. But most of the time, they, they work pretty well. But there is some shifting going on, and you just got to patch it up. All right. Then you have your concrete poured um, wall forms that work these uh, foundation walls here. All right, so what you use for the panels to form these uh, foundation forms is either plywood that's specially made for concrete forming that's super thick and very uh, strong. This is way stronger than any other kind of building pl uh, plywood. And you have your metal forms like this that can be um, assembled and disassembled pretty easily. And you just use them again and again and again. Right here is your um, plywood forms. And you can see they're usually two, only two foot wide by eight feet. That is because they are so heavy because they're about an inch and an eighth thick. All right. And so they're only about two feet, so you can easily maneuver them. If, if they were four by eight sheets, um, they'd be they'd be quite heavy, but you can see these are plywood right here for your forms. And this is the this is like usually for commercial work, your concrete forms. All right, that's all made out of metal. And of course, what you have to have between these panels is rebar, lots and lots and lots of rebar. All right, especially for commercial work, if you're making big foundation walls, you gotta have a ton of rebar in there. All right. And then you have to nail your um, two buys to, this is one way of doing it, to your footer. And then you kind of build, uh, set your wall forms on top of that and you nail it down just like this. This is usually a masonry nail or a tapcon that put that uh, board right here down so you can just nail your concrete form plate right on there. And then you kind of just put your forms on your other side. And what you have in between here, you can see what the heck are these things? Well, these are snap ties. And what you do is you have these specially made snap ties that space out your walls and keep them together at the same time. And you can kind of, they're big screws at the end and you kind of screw them and fasten them. So you're adjusting the width of the um, uh, your concrete form wall here. And these kind of like stoppers keep them. And it's all compressed, you know, at the at uniform width. And then your walls will turn out real nice. And so they're called snap ties because when you're time that this the snap tie inside here will be in the concrete. But then everything else, all right, on the outside just needs to be either grounded off or you just kind of break it off with a hammer. So all this will be eventually just snapped off. These right here. So that's what stays in there in the middle of the form, and then these just get snapped. Same kind of thing. All right, here's another one these flat bars. These can be used, but they're less common. That is because you kind of these have these tabs here, and they kind of stick out. So it's. Um, I don't know, just not as, not as good here. But you can either grind them off or uh, it's really hard to break them off, but they kind of look like that afterwards. You can hammer them off, kind of like with this motion, but, you know. All right, now it's time to pour the concrete. Now, when you're pouring the concrete, all right, you sometimes if it's like a real tall wall, you have to do it in stages. Um, but you just kind of get the hose and let it fill up. And then... Uh, one thing that I haven't mentioned before is the slump test. You definitely want to check your concrete before they start pouring it in, and that's the consistency that you want. You want it to slump just like this, and you don't want it to have any kind of weird shape um, 
So what you do is you pour it into this cone and then you flip it over and if it just slumps to a certain amount of inches that you want, then it's uh, good to go. You can start pouring everything. But if it doesn't slump correctly like that, you're going to have to maybe send it to back to the uh, plant to be mixed better or something like that. But most are pretty reputable concrete chuck people and you should be good to go. Like you said, you just kind of use that slump test and you just kind of pack all that concrete in there and then you turn the cone over and then you want to make sure that your slump is correct. If it does anything like this, all right, it is not what you want it to be. And there it is after it's all poured. You can see where the panels were because you have kind of like these lines in the concrete and that's all had your plant panels there. All right, so it's kind of the difference between block walls and poured concrete walls. It is cheaper to do the block wall because you can kind of get block anywhere and you don't have to set up a bunch of forms and it doesn't take as long. Um, but but some of the cons is, is that you can't, uh, it, does, it does let in moisture and stuff like that. It could crack uh, much less than a concrete wall. All right, the pros for a concrete wall is that there's no joints or anything like that with the mortar. Uh, it's pretty good against moisture. It's very strong uh, against the soil pressure when you backfill into the walls. And uh, once the forms are framed up, the pouring does go pretty quick. Um, the problem is that it is expensive to do. You need skilled labor and all the materials to make those forms. And not all areas have access to large concrete chucks. So if it's a more rural area um, in back roads and stuff, that a big concrete chuck, and because you need multiple trucks to come in, all right, then you need to just make a block wall because you can haul the, all the materials with that and just pick up trucks. And um, so uh, poor concrete is not accessible for everywhere in the country. All right. After you have that, the last thing you do is a pour a concrete slab, which is your basement floor. And what you have to do is put something called remesh down. And it just looks like oversized chicken wire or something like that. And it lays flat so you can pour your uh, concrete on. And there it is. Just pouring your, you can see the chute here and they're pouring on and they're just floating it out. All right, that concludes the uh, foundation wall lesson.